Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and we're continuing on right now in uh, R. So if you haven't joined me before, I normally do um, data science topics in general, or I cover uh, open source platforms, uh, tutorials, um, or use cases, as well as commercial platforms. Today I'm using an open source platform called R, and this is going to be a, a multi-part series on some world development indicator data. Um, and so this first part will just be exploration, um, and then we'll be getting into, really the focus is gonna be in time series and forecasting, um, including uh, Vector and uh, Garch, I think is what we're gonna end up with this series. So the, the, whoops, the, uh, the package that I'm using today is this WDI package. You can see it's recently been updated December 7th, 2018. Um, so last month. And I'm going to use our studio um, for illustration. So I'm using uh, this package. So I'm going to require this this world data and i'm going to uh just explore the the data set itself so if you haven't looked at that um you can can thumb through here on the different indicators that are available um and the the data set data set itself okay then i'm going to actually pull a subset uh, certain industrialized countries. So I'm going to pull the U.S., Canada, Great Britain, uh, China, Japan, um, Israel, and so Singapore, a couple of these, and I'm going to pull from 60 to 2011. So I'm going to execute that um, and create a GDP uh, set, data set with that, and then I'm going to give it uh, names and then I'm going to require this ggplot2 package and the scales package. So I've got those loaded. And then I'm going to uh, create my first plot, which is per capita GDP. And so we're going to look at this plot uh, a little more in depth in just a second. But again, this is per uh, capita, in other words, per person, per head GDP for these industrialized countries, Canada, uh, China, Germany, et cetera. So I'm gonna create a second, excuse me, plot that's gonna require this useful um, package. And let me just create this GG plot, right? So GDP, um, of course you can freeze and hopefully you can see those commands explicitly. If you wanna reproduce this. Uh, and then, so I've got the the actual. This is not per capita. This is gross GDP in millions of, of dollars. Uh, the multiple uh, millions here. All right. And then um, let's look now, since we've created these two different uh, categories or these two different plots. Let's look at these. So let me uh, expand this and expand this window just a little bit um, and see what the series actually looks like. So um, looking at the, the per capita G GDP here, you can see um, in red, I've got Canada. Um, interesting, all of these series, I've got a big uh, drop, uh, some affected more than others, but this is the global credit crisis, right? So pretty much all the industrialized nations were affected, uh, except for China, which is very interesting. Uh, of course, China controls their currency, they control a lot of their, their economy, so uh, they're the only ones that were not affected. Um, so China's coming along here, and uh, you can see the growth per capita uh, just beginning to steadily rise, uh, certainly a little more in the last 10 or so years. The interesting thing with China versus the overall, as you can see that their GDP overall is this line right here, um, this line right here. Um, so I've got 
a quite a rise in in China um, just just recently uh, here. So um, that that compared to the, uh, the previous plot, which the rise is very slowly. Ultimately, we're going to forecast here for uh, for GDP. So a couple of the other uh, comments here. We can see that the U.S., which is this 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 line, I hate to annotate because uh, I uh, <laughs> um, I've got some challenges with it. But anyway, so this this line right here, you can see, and and this line, <laughs> um, this is the the U.S. So the U.S. per capita GDP is is pretty stable. Uh, compared to some of the other lines, you can see uh, Great Britain here. Great Britain had kind of a looks like a, a recession back here. This was the obviously the the U.S. stock market got a big hit around 2000 um, during the dot com bust. Uh, looks like the the Great Britain was affected uh, by that even more than the U.S. But maybe something preceding that. So we can make a lot out of this. We could look at this in, in detail. Quite honestly, it'd probably be better if I uh, created a smaller subset and looked at this uh, for, it's a, little, it's a little busy here. So let me get rid of my drawing tools and go back. We're gonna do a couple more things. I wanna keep these uh, videos pretty short um, with just a few points made per, her, but you can certainly reproduce what I have here. Again, hopefully you, you can see all of the R commands that I'm executing. Um, and then I want to convert, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull off a, uh, a data set US only, right? So I'm going to execute that and uh, I'm going to convert this this to a, a time series. Right, I'm going to uh, convert that object to a time series uh, class, class time series. And then there's the, the, the actual data. And then let me plot this data for the, for the US uh, per capita GDP. Again, we see kind of what we saw before. Again, this, the credit crisis is the one that really affected uh, per capita GDP in the US. And then lastly, just to set us up for next time, is we're going to want to do forecasting modeling. And to do that, what we want is we want to be able to determine whether the series is going to be um, such that we can make an appropriate model. And in, in a previous um, series, what I've done is I have talked about the autocorrelation function in R, the ACF function. Uh, if you're familiar with correlation, we compare two continuous variables. The Pearson mode, uh, moment, uh, product moment correlation is uh, two vectors of two independent or two variables, I should say, and we measure the correlation between them, how they run together, whether they run up uh, positively or negatively. The autocorrelation is serial correlation, and what that is, is if we have one variable, I'm interested in seeing if one time period is correlated to a past time period. For example, sales in the United States, definitely December to December is a high retail sales month. Um, and so there are or autocorrelated uh, 12 periods back, M or an order of uh, M, which would be M equal 12. So with this autocorrelation function in R, what I can do is I can look at how correlated the current time is, T, for that variable to recent um, values for the same variable. So we can see here for this US GDP per capita, the uh, this, is, this is zero, so this doesn't really count, but time, this would be one, right? It's, it's correlated with itself 100%. T minus one, um, it's correlated, uh, you know, 90%, 90 plus percent. T minus two, it's still 90%. And then it begins to level off or, or, or dampen over time. 
So what that means is that this series is has a lot of autocorrelation to it, and um, no surprise there, right? So we, we can see um, it's definitely trending up, and that the um, this is going to what we call this this, this series is non-stationary. So um, which means that if we're going to model it, we're really going to need to difference the series. We're going to need to take care of some some things so that we can effectively modeling uh, model it. Um, technically, stationary means that the uh, mean and variance um, of a time series are constant for for the whole series. In layman's terms, kind of what that means is. If I give you a point within the series, you can't tell me where I am in the series because I'm not, I don't have any trend up or trend down that helps you determine where I am and the variability is constant. So it's just, it's just random and therefore you can't really, you have a difficult time telling me where I am in a period. So there's no seasonality in, in the data as well. So, um, and just for, for grins, I'll plot the, the parcel autocorrelation function, um, but we won't really get into that. But the bottom line of this series is we're moving forward. We're going to be actually forecasting, doing some forecasting techniques. And with what this autocorrelation function tells me is that I'm going to have to difference, um, which means taking um, the current time and subtracting or dividing. Um, one of the past series. So that could be uh, differencing time t with time t minus one or time t and t minus two or time t and t minus three or if it's a multiplicative series dividing by. So anyway, we'll get into that uh, a bit next time. Thanks.